This is a quick tour around the electrical connections of Inmove. We'll start with the power supply. That's a um, 6 volt 40 amp power supply. Comes up through XT60 connector to the main switch. Main switch goes up to the uh, nerve board and the supply then loops across to the other nerve board. So that way both nerve boards had 6 volts. 6 volts from that power supply also goes to this secondary switch which does the audio. So I have 12 vo uh, 6 volts that goes to this buck converter which drops it down to 5 volts. 5 volts used for the powered USB hub and the Arduino Nano for the NeoPixels. Uh, I have a second buck converter. This is an up converter. It changes 6 volts to 12 volts. The 12 volts is used to power the um, Xbox Connects through the standard Xbox Connects plug that I've uh, Cut the AC adapter off and connected the output of the, that buck converter to. That buck converter also supplies 12 volts to the amplifier card. Uh, this is the one that's recommended in the bomb. I uh, found it works better on 12 volts and 6 volts. The amplifier drives two ears. Okay, the um, Arduino Mega with the nerve board on it. Um, I'll take that out and video that separately. So we have a cable that's running down here to a satellite nerve board that runs the two stomach servos. So in this case it's 26 Seven is the top stomach and 28 is the mid stomach. Um, it also runs the, uh, the neck from this nerve board. So that's the uh, articulated neck and the head roll. And then we have two leads here that go to the one is the arm and one is the hand. The arm goes to this nerve board. So that's the three servos for the shoulder and the and one for the bicep. The hand one runs down here, and that's the fingers, thumb and the wrist. The um, right hand nerve board, I have the two arms, the same with the arm and the hand and then we have the another neck board and that runs the, um, now what do they call that? That's 12A. Oh. That's the roll neck, which is these two servos there. Um, and this board is also the Sonic. Um, apparently you can't run, I have two Sonics, a left and a right, but you can only run one. So this is the right Sonic. It goes down to this other nerve board uh, and that runs away to the Sonic. Also, the PIR connects to there. Okay, I missed out a nerve board. So on the left hand side, we have the eyes, which goes up into the head. So that will drive the uh, four servos for the eyes plus the uh, neck rotation.
This is the left hand side um, Arduino Mega with the nerve board removed. Um, so all we have on this board is the USB connection that runs down to the powered USB hub. Uh, here's a closer look at the USB hub. So this is a powered USB hub. As I said before, um, the power on this side, that comes from the five volt, the six volt to five volt buck regulator. I just took the hub to the electronic shop and got a plug that fit into there. The, the power adapter that come with the hub um, said that it was centre pin was positive and outer pin was negative. So that's what the DC plug looked like. So I just brought the same thing and wired it up. So the centre pin was positive. Okay, so the two blue cables on the outside are for the Arduino Megas. They can be in any of the ports, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is the plug for the um, um, web camera in his eye, that's the, the Microsoft version. And then we have the USB for the uh, Xbox Connect. And um, this is the USB sound card. Um, here's a, a lot of people using this sort of version. Um, it saves running an audio lead from your laptop. So we've got the, the audio out and the audio in, and they're just on normal three and a half mil jacks. So the audio out goes up to my amplifier and the microphone. I'm using, I've tried a few different ones, but I end up with this one. So it's just a 2.4 gig wireless microphone. That was pretty simple. It's got an inbuilt battery that just plugs into there. This is just a simple extension lead. So the microphone, this wasn't sticking out the back of Inmu too far. The other end of the microphone is this and it's just a simple lapel mic. But it's got reasonable range and um, there's not too much distortion or anything on it. This is the new board out of the left hand side uh, that was plugged into the Arduino Mega. Now if you have a full, uh, full in-move, you'll need two sets of these boards. So you'll have to buy um, two sets from the in-move site. That will give you the base board and all the daughter boards and all the satellite boards to plug the servos into. Now there's some electronics you need to do to this board. Um, it's basically some three millimetre LEDs and the colour of your choice, it doesn't matter. And a appropriate size resistor. And also these XT60s, which are battery connectors, which is pretty common, so you'll get them from most model shops. And you also need a tactile switch for the reset button. So they get sold onto the board. Then I think the instructions talk about soldering these pins on the back. So these are what plug into the Arduino Mega. So these pins are called uh, male pin headers, 0.1 millimeter or 2.54 millimeter spacing. You can get these in single or double if in the case of this one, or you can just use two of these. So the idea is that you just measure up what one you want, how many you want, then you cut cut the plastic off with a junior hacksaw or a Dremel. 
and we put them in to there into the holes and solder them up once they're soldered in in place then we can move on to the to the daughter boards so here's a spare from my right hand side because the right hand side doesn't use this uh, doesn't communicate with the stomach and the eye so here we use the single header again cut it to the length that we want um, and in this case we want to put the pins this way around and just have them sticking just through to the board don't push them through all the way because you won't have enough room on the board between the, the two boards like that and then just solder them in so when that's soldered in you want to get your um, 14 pin is IDC sockets vertical box header and mount them the header's got a slot here that slot lines up with the printed triangle now putting that in and solder in the back once they're soldered in place and this is in then you can solder that fit that onto the motherboard main board and Hold it from the back and just repeat for the other boards um, as I said the left hand side drives the stomach and the eye the right hand side doesn't so you can leave that blank on the right hand side the uh, satellite boards which the um, servos plug into same thing so these are the installation uh, the vertical box headers the slot there lines up with that solder them in place now we use um, three-way angled uh, male headers um, you can buy them in three by four so that we've got three rows and they're only four long or you can get them three by twenty so they're or three by forty so this is like a, a three by forty and same thing you just cut it to length whatever you want depends on what board it is then they just slide into the three pins like so and over and solder on the back you want the plastic spacer at the front and then your servo plugs into that so you can see on the board it's got s plus and negative so S, the signal is yellow, plus is red, negative is black. Most of the boards have got, because this is the eye and mouth, it's got the channel number that you're going to use. So that will correspond with the uh, documentation in the BOM. Okay. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the making up the cables um, I'll, I'll link a video that shows the uh, right way to make up the cables so this is just a quick introduction so these are there we go. these are called 14 pin insta uh, installation displacement cable mounting plugs 2x5 with strain relief they come in three, two, uh, three parts. So this is the part that gets fitted on the cable. This bit slides in there and squashes the cable. That, the uh, metal claws grip into the cable. Do something like that. Hold that back over then put the strain relief on there. A uh, couple of tricks, there's a, um, a triangle on here, I don't know if, you, if that's easy to see or not. Um, you should line that up with either the red or the other side. 
And then when you make the other plug off, you want to make sure that that triangle matches how you've done this side. As I said, I'll, I'll put a link to the um, how to do that properly. Now, the um, easy way to, you can um, just put all this into a vise and squash it in a vise, but it is easier if you use um, these um, IDC dip connector crimpers. They're reasonably cheap. So it's just a matter of putting all of the assembly in there with the cables and everything else, then just pushing it down, squeezing it down, and we'll push the cable onto these connectors. Okay, I'll just do a quick demo of how to make off one of these plugs. Um, I've already made off this end. And um, it's possible to see there's a little triangle there and I've lined that up with the, the red core. So this end, just mark it to, you, to the length you want and uh, cut it with a pair of scissors or a uh, with a knife. But that leaves sometimes the copper wire could be still exposed here and then can short out there. So what you want to do is just hold it with one hand and just pull the insulation, drag it over and pull the insulation over. Then that way the insulation comes forward and the, the copper wire goes back. So as I said, um, so there's my triangle there. So I need to match the triangle up onto the red. That way pin one will be pin one. All right. So put this one in. Let me do that first. Slide that in. Push it down, lock it in, get it um, reasonably straight. Then with the crimping tool, we line it up there. And that's that done. And we fold that back over and put the strain relief in. And that's that end cable made up. So the important bit is that there's a little triangle, red wire goes along there and it matches up with the triangle on there. So now we've got our plugs the right orientation.